Hey, we're so glad that you decided to join us on Mother's Day. To all the moms, welcome. Dads, men, can we go ahead and give mom a round of applause this morning? We're so glad they're here to, to worship Jesus with us. And today we're gonna go ahead and lift up high the name of Jesus because he's worthy of all of our praise. So can we lift our voices to the King right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, we adore you for you are good. Your love endures forever. You are the King of Kings. Come on church, go ahead and put your hands together with us. Sing this out. Eyes wide, I'm set on you. You made a road in the wild, standing on ancient truth. I'm pressing on with my back to the past and oh, let the unseen visions of the future. And I say, oh, let the old dream dreams again. In my world, got to a new thing. I know you're moving. In my world, a chain reaction, a holy passion. Whoa. We worship you. Does somebody have something they can celebrate Jesus about today? See Passing to strive with you And bursting like heaven in motion In Jesus you made me new I'm pressing on With my back to the past And oh Let the young see visions of the future And I say oh with me in my world got to a new thing I know you're moving yeah. in my world got to a new thing I know you're moving in my world chain reaction for me passion Whoa. Ransom, his grace runs deep. 
while I was, while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Declare, you see, died for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. church happy mother's day again to all of our moms in the house and if you're watching online happy mother's day to you too we're going to read a scripture together psalm 23 you're very familiar with it i'm sure but you know it's a powerful promise that through the valley or whatever you're walking through that he's always with us and he never leaves us so let's read this together you ready 
Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I, sh I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's keep singing together. that rest that you give us beside still waters in green pastures, Lord, where you refresh our souls, Lord. We thank you that we can answer the call to come. We answer that today, Jesus. Let us hear your voice. We lay down our burdens before you, God. We thank you for the rivers of refreshing that will flow this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing this out. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You say. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I'm 
Psalm 20, verse, Psalm 22 says, but thou art holy, thou inhabits the praises of his people. Praise and worship ushers in the presence of God. And that's what you need to fight your battles. You need the presence of a mighty God, a mighty God. So through prayer and worship, through praise, God says, I'm coming to, that word inhabit means to pitch his tent. He comes and pitches his tent in the place of praise. He says, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to be there with you through it all. So could we take another few moments? Psalm 134.2, if you're comfortable with this, this is Bible praise. But Psalm 134.2 says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. So if you can do that, just take a moment and praise him with your hands uplifted. That's Bible praise. Clapping your hands is Bible praise. Lifting your voice with a loud voice, that's Bible praise. So Lord, we lift our hands, we lift our voices, and we exalt you, because you're worthy, you're worth it. You're worthy to be exalted, and worthy to be praised, and your presence is with us, and you fight our battles for us, because you're a good God, and you're a mighty God, and that you're able to do everything that is needed today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in the sanctuary and we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is the promise. This is what you can count on. It may look like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by Almighty God when you're praising Him, when you're worshiping Come on, that's, that's awesome, that's awesome. Thank you, Tamara, that's so good. Thank you for leading us in that. Well, I want, you to, I want you to turn and introduce yourself to the people around you, shake hands, give somebody a high five. We have child dedication and our parents are coming to the stage at this time. Hallelujah sound good today. You look good today. All right. You look good. This is Mother's Day. Welcome to all the mothers. I can't think of a better day to have child dedication than on Mother's Day. We've got some families that are taking advantage of that, saying, yes, we're going to make a commitment to raise our children in the ways of Christ. Look at these beautiful families. Welcome. So glad you're doing this today. Praise the Lord. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so nice. Blessings on you. How are you today? Good, good, good. Hey, how are you all? You want to say? Wow. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? At Chapel Hill, we believe in the importance of coming publicly and bringing our children before the Lord and making a commitment on the part of the parent, of dedicating themselves to raise their children the ways of Christ and to follow Him. And at Chapel Hill, we don't have infant baptism. We believe that children ought to be old enough to make a decision themselves to follow Jesus. And following that, they would be baptized in water. That would be their next step after you say yes to Jesus. But we believe it's very important that parents that are like these today are saying, yes, we want to lead our children the ways of Christ. We have biblical examples for this. Hannah did this with Samuel. She brought him to the temple, brought him before the priest, and so brought him before the Lord. So Cindy, just give us a, give us a quick thought or comment about Yes, but parents, the Word of God says that these blessings, these children, that they are the, His reward. The fruit of the room is His reward. Yes. And so they're your reward that they came from him and so as pastor said when we give them back to him as you're doing today we're just saying okay god you've entrusted this precious little life this reward to me into my care but now i give him back 
to you because I believe that you're the one that has a plan. Psalms 139 says, you know, that he knew these children before they were even a thought in either of your minds and that he has a good plans for them. And so you are partnering with God. What an important thing to do. There's nothing more important than you can do for your children than to bring them and give them to the one who has the purpose, whose life is, is in him. And so we just honor you today. We thank you for giving this opportunity to be a part of this and just pray blessings over your children and that they would live out their days to the fullest of God's purpose and plans. Yes, yes. Welcome. Glad you're here with us. All right. We're going to give them a charge, and we're going to ask them to make a commitment as we did prepare to dedicate their children. Before they do, if there's any extended family members, maybe a grandparent or aunt, uncle, just a, a friend that's just here today, would you come and join us right here? You can just come and stand right here in the front would be fine. Just come stand on either side and come join these families because we know this. We know that, that many people are usually involved, many family members are involved in the raising of children. And as we make and give this charge to these parents, we'd also like for you to be included in this and say, yes, we're going to help raise these children for Christ. So come and join us right here. We're so glad that you've come to be with us today. I know some of you are visiting, maybe from other churches or from other places, and we're glad that you've come today. All right, we're going we're to ask you to commit to doing three things, to train your children, to model for your children, and to release your children, to train, to model, and release. So let's just say that together. Train, model and release so we want you to memorize those three things all right so train model release but let me say something about that first of all uh it's important that you parents that you are the primary teachers and instructors for your children in the ways of christian things now sometimes it's easy to bring them to church and ask other people to teach them and and that's a wonderful part of that we want to partner with you but it's very important that parents take the initiative to teach god's word and to train your children in the ways of Christ. The second thing is to model for them. Model for them what it means to follow Jesus. What that looks like. What that sounds like. Because you can say one thing, but if you don't do it yourself, how many of you know there's going to be a disconnect and the children are, are not going to follow that? So we want to train them, teach them, and then we want to model that. And then the third thing is to release them. What do I mean? To release them to God and say, God, these are your children. And whatever plans, whatever purposes, whatever, whatever future vocation you have for them, we're going to release them to you and trust you with them. Um, he may call your children to be a missionary or a pastor, a teacher. How wonderful that would be. But there's challenges that go along with that. Would you trust God enough to release your children into his care for that? Or for whatever. Maybe it's marketplace ministry. and Maybe it's secular ministry, yet they're going to be a light for Christ out in the marketplace. So would you release your children to the Lord? If you would do these three things, train, model, and release. If you did this, would you say, I will? Awesome. Beautiful. All right, we're going to pray a dedicatory prayer with your, for your children right now. You have some hosts that are standing there with you, possibly the, the younger children. If you want to hand them to the, to the gentleman there, that would be fine. If you want to continue to hold them, that's fine as well. But let's just pray together. Come on, church family. This is a, this is a family moment. So let's stretch our hands forward towards these families right now as I lead us in this very important prayer of dedication for these beautiful children today. Heavenly Father, we come together as a church family and we stand with these parents and with these families and we pray that you would bless these children just as Jesus, you brought the children around you and you blessed them in the New Testament. We bring these children to you, around you, and we thank you for your presence that will surround them, that will bless them. Anoint them for your purposes and for your plans. We thank you for your hand of blessing upon them. We pray for your hand of protection upon them. Give angels charge of them every day of their life. Use them for your glory and your praise. And we pray for these wonderful parents and these family members that you would give, quicken them and give them discernment, give them wisdom, give them insight in how to best and most effectively raise these children for you. So Lord, we thank you for this. We now dedicate our children. We dedicate these children to you. We give them to you. And we thank you for your hand upon them and blessing upon them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Come on, one more time. Let's give it up for these families. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for joining with us today. You can be seated. Thank you so much. God bless you. Give it up again for these families that are dedicating their children. Well, welcome to Chapel Hill. We're so glad you decided to join us this morning for our Sunday morning worship experience. My name is Matt. And I'm Abby. And what an honor it is that you chose to spend a portion of your Mother's Day weekend with us, especially if you're a first time guest joining us here for the first time. Chapel Hill family, can we make some noise for our guests here today? That's right, we're so glad you're here. Whether it's your first time or maybe your first time in a while, you could have been anywhere and you chose to be here and we're glad that you did. Here at our church, we believe that every one of us has a next step in our journey with God. And so we wanna help people take those next steps. So if you notice at the seat pocket in front of you, there is a card, it's called a next step card. Uh, we encourage you to take a moment during the worship experience, fill that out, especially if you're first time guest, uh, or even if you've been here uh, for a while, we wanna help you take a next step. And you can, once you fill that out, you can just leave it on the seat as you leave today, or you could put it in the giving container when it's passed through your aisles in just a moment during our time of giving. Hey, speaking of giving, it's Mother's Day. Yes, it is. And I think we should give some stuff away. I love giving stuff away. We should give some stuff away. Okay, so you know what makes me feel like the most confident mom, like I got my life together? When I pick up the kids from school. No. No. When my car is clean. Any moms out there that was know what my I'm next talking guess. about? You know what I'm talking about when my car is clean. So today I just have a special announcement for every mom in the house. Before you leave today, you are all getting a voucher for a free, free car, car wash. wash. That's right, mom, we love That's you. That's right, free car wash. Okay, so all we need you to do is when you leave the worship experience, head on out to um, guest services or you can go to the hospitality room and give us your information. We're gonna send you a voucher for that free car wash. Somebody say whoop whoop. That is awesome. Also, when you leave, we've got some cute, cute tote bags for you. There's a photo booth. You can take pictures with your kids today and also some sparkling waters for you in the commons as well. Happy Mother's Day. We love you very much. Yeah, we love being a generous church. And as we get ready to move into our time of giving, I just wanna say thank you, all of our staff, we say thank you for continuing to trust the Lord with your tithe. And for those of you who continue to give above and beyond the tithe through our Kingdom Builders Giving, you really are changing lives here, locally, and around the world. So we encourage you to continue to do so. And this summer, we understand that many of you probably already have plans for a vacation. I know we're gonna be traveling. I think we're going to Disney World. And then me and my daughter are taking a go trip to Ecuador. So we're gonna be dropping pins all over the map this summer. And we know that many of you have plans too. We encourage you to automate the important. And so we, we want you to just maybe explore giving through our online giving portal. There is an uh, uh, opportunity where you can just uh, select reoccurring giving. It's one less thing to think about. I just set mine up yesterday and it really is easy. And you know what? I don't have to think about it. Paychecks comes in, tithe goes out. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And we get to be blessed. And so we want to encourage you, maybe explore that. You can check it out at uh, chapelhill.cc slash give. Uh, and we hope that you will. Let's pray over our time of giving. Father God, we just thank you that you have blessed us so much when you gave us your son, the most precious gift we could ever receive. But God, you've given us so much more above and beyond that, Lord, even meeting our physical needs and even our desires. So Father, we just pray, Lord, for your blessing on each and every giver today, Lord, that they would have more than enough for what you've called them to do and more than enough to be a blessing to others and that you will richly supply all of their needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. As the giving containers are passed through each row, when it reaches the end of your row, you can simply take that container and place it on the floor beside you and someone will return to pick that up shortly. Well, while you're doing that, all the ladies in the house, we have an uh, important message just for you. Watch this. 
Arena of Valor offers a biblical path for spiritual growth and development. It's a program designed to provide women with the skills and experience necessary to embrace discipleship as a way of life. In nine months, using nine tools, women will obtain nine outcomes that provide the foundation needed to live the victorious Christian life. For women who want to establish their identity and purpose in Christ, Women of Valor gives them the opportunity to study, pray, live in relationship with others, and share their faith. If you want to obtain the spiritual tools you need to become equipped to mentor others, decide to participate in Women of Valor. It's an investment that will revolutionize your life. Before Women of Valor, I didn't have any structure. I have structure now. My life has changed tremendously. I have a relationship, a stronger relationship with Jesus, and it's also impacted my family. I'm able to impart what I've learned in WOV into my kids. Women of Valor for me has given me the tools and the accountability to share what God has done in my life because before Women of Valor, I knew that I was entering a season of my life where I needed to be bold about my witness, and that's exactly what Women of Valor has done for me. All along my, uh, my journey with the Lord, there were women in my life who just mentored and spoke into my life and, and shared Christ through my journey. And uh, as a result of taking the class, um, I have a deeper intimacy with the Father. I've fallen in love again with the Word of God, and I'm really excited to be that woman to someone else, to disciple them. All right, so ladies, we hope that you will sign up for the interest meeting for Women of Valor. It will be next Sunday at 5 o'clock, so uh, you can do that at guest services today. Women of Valor is just a powerful, powerful discipleship ministry that we hope you'll get involved with. Well, I get to preach with the rain coming down, but rain is a sign of God's blessing. Come on, God is blessing today with more rain. We can, we can use rain. Praise God. How many of you know we need rain? Got to have rain. You can't live without it. Praise God for blessing. All right. Hey, I got a big announcement before I get into the message. Uh, new summer Sunday service schedule starting in two weeks. So for nine weeks, from the end of May to the 1st of August, new summer schedule, Saturday at 6. That's always been that way. And then Sunday, 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on Sunday. So we're going from 3 to 2 just during the summer months. As many of you are traveling, we'll be able to accommodate our, our crowds in the two services. So we're gonna do that for multiple reasons. And if you need me to explain them to you, I'll do that. Just call me, all right, and we'll talk about it. But hopefully that will be a blessing to you. Sunday's at 10 and 11.30. It starts two weeks, not next week, but two weeks from today on Memorial Day weekend. That's a good weekend to start that as many people are traveling, but we will have two services, 10 and 11.30. Everybody got it? All right, in two weeks. Now, how many of you, how many of you are children? How many of you, let me say it this way. How many of you live at home with mom right now? You live at home with mom. No matter what your age is, young or older, you live at home with mom. Mom is there. Okay, this message really is for you. All right, now I'm going to help mom today. In fact, I think I'm going to get some high fives from moms on the way out today. So mom, come see me. I had ladies come last night. I just say, come on, give me some of Right there. So, 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 yeah. But, but I want to talk to to everybody in the room today, especially those of us who have moms that are still living, and uh, some things we can do to help mom and to bless mom. So, I want to talk about seven things that mom needs. Seven things mom needs. Now, I shared this last night, and then we went out to dinner afterwards because today's my daughter's birthday. Who's a mom now? Of four kids. And uh, so, so we were sitting there at the table, and they started peppering me with other things that mom needs, okay? I mean, they started telling me other things. I said, look, I've, I've already got seven. I can't, I can't, I've already got the slides made. I can't add more. To, so we got seven things mom needs. I know there's a lot of things, but hopefully these seven things will be of help. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, children, come on, mom, help me with this. Obey your parents in the Lord. Now remember, all of us are children, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that, say it with me, it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. Now Paul is quoting the Ten Commandments as he says this. 
He says, honor your mother and your father so life will go well with you and you can live a long time. Now, there were a few times when I did not obey my mother and I didn't feel like I was going to have m- much more life. I thought I was going to die. I'm watch- my mom's watching today. I love you, mom. Thank you for disciplining me. I look back and I thank God that she was willing to say the tough things and do the, the tough things. It, when it wasn't popular with me, it wasn't what I wanted, but it's what I needed. Come on, mom. It, you, we we le- lead our children and love our children by disciplining them and give them what they need. The first thing mom needs from you is mom needs appreciation. Write that down. Mom needs appreciation. And all the moms said. In the Bible, you see people being appreciated because we all have a need for this. So I'm going to give you two uh, verses. Both of them are chapter 1, verse 3. Philippians 1, verse 3 says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Colossians 1, 3 says, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. So, so it's good to be appreciative of other people. We can be appreciative to God for, uh, for you, for other people. But it's really good to be appreciative for mom and to mom. There's hundreds, probably thousands of ways to show mom that you appreciate her. So, so today, but not just today, we need to get better at this. We need to let mom know throughout the year that we appreciate her. Say it, say it with words, say it with cards, say it with candy, say it with lunch, say, say it with stocks and bonds. Come on, say it however you want it. However you want to say it, but say it. What if you didn't know your mom? There's people that were adopted. They didn't know their mom, their birth mom, or you, you had a very difficult relationship with your mom. Then appreciate the fact that she labored to bring you into the world, but you can still be appreciative. Appreciate the fact that you weren't aborted and that you are alive to worship God and to serve God. I heard, it, I heard an interview this week with a mother Pam and her husband served as missionaries in a remote village in the Philippines during her difficult pregnancy. Her doctor in the Philippines discovered a tumor and told her that she needed to abort the child quickly because her life was in danger. Her doctor tried to convince her that she could die and that the baby wasn't really a baby, but that he was just a mass of fetal tissue. Pam said, no, we're gonna trust God. If it costs me my life and my baby can live, I'm willing to do that, but I'm going to trust God. And they did, and the baby was born, and his name is Tim Tebow, former Heisman Trophy winner, a light for the gospel of Jesus Christ in a huge way around the world. Aren't you glad that Pam chose to trust God? What an incredible testimony. What an incredible story. And aren't you glad that your mom chose you? I think we should take a few minutes right now and and continue to appreciate moms. I I, I wanna appreciate a couple of groups of moms that are in the room in a special way. Some of you have been moms for a long time, a long time. Some of you have children that are 50 years older or more. So I wanna appreciate some moms in the room who have children have been, it's your golden anniversary or more from being a mom. You've had children for more than 50 years. Would you stand in the room? If you have been a mom for 50 years or more, come on, would you stand or wave your hand at me? (laughs) Yeah, in the back, yeah, all over the room. Come on, give it up for moms. You've been a mom for a long time. God bless you. Thank you for your consistency. Man, I love that. My mom has been a mom for a long time. Oh, let's stop there. I, I start talking about for 50 some years. Now, there's another group of moms I want to celebrate, and that is moms, you're raising kids on your own. I want to appreciate you. You're raising kids on your own. You, 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 you've got a tough job. You're a single mom, or maybe you're a widowed mom, or maybe you're a mom and your husband is deployed right now, and he's not here or maybe for some reason something has taken him away from the home. Listen, I wanna appreciate every mom who's kinda doing it on her own right now. Would all you moms stand right now? We wanna show you, we appreciate you, look at you, 
Come on, come on, give, give it up for these hero moms right now. Good job, thank you, thank you, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Now, now I, how about we just have every mom stand real quick? Come on, every mom in the room, every mom in the house, give it up for moms all over the place. God bless you. We love you and we honor you. Awesome, awesome. Give them a high five on the way down. All right. Not only is appreciation so important, and not just on Mother's Day, but how many of you know moms need a life? Now you say, well, this doesn't sound very spiritual. Oh, it's, it's pretty spiritual. This may not sound very deep to you, but it's so important. Moms need a life. Mom, I, I know you want the best for your kids and you try so hard to do everything for them, but you can't do everything. It's just too much. And as a mom and as a parent, it's important to know where to draw the line. And I know that line is fuzzy at best. How do you draw the line? How do you know what to do? You're expected to be so many things. You're expected to be a chef, a nurse, and housekeeper, a mechanic, a free Uber driver. I mean, you're, you're, you, you you, they look at you and think you're an ATM, right? I mean, you just like. Psalm 127.2 in the New Living Translation says, it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. Now, what is that? That's a life without balance. But that's also the time, that it, it talks about this time expectation for moms. Let's really read the rest of the verse here in Psalm 127. It says, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Verse three, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. This past passage is about parenting. It's a reminder of the fact that you need a life and the life that you need, watch this, the life that you need is the life Jesus wants you to have. And the Bible tells us that Jesus wants us to have life to the full. He says, I've come that you might have life, and that you might have it to the full. But if mom's life is so busy and so full that she doesn't have time to connect with Jesus, how is there room for the full life of Jesus? See, it's only a life with Jesus that we discover the full life that Jesus describes. A full life of busyness, a full life of work is not necessarily the full life that Jesus describes. And the only way you can have the full life with Jesus is to connect with Jesus. It's to spend time with Jesus. And I want to suggest to you the mom who will find a way to carve out some time to have a quiet time with Jesus consistently each day is the mom that can begin to experience the full life and the presence of Jesus, to be able to walk in a spirit of praise, to be able to walk in faith, to be able to walk in constant communion and communication with Jesus through the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know the Holy Spirit is God too? Next week, we're going to start a new series. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and that he's God too. And God wants us to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, and he will help you live life to the full through Jesus Christ. Let me tell you how we can help mom, things mom needs, how we can help her have a life. We can help her, watch this, by taking responsibility. That's a Jesus thing to do, by taking responsibility, being responsive to mom, and being responsible for yourself. Now, I understand when children are very small and infants and young children, they need a lot of mom's time and care and attention. But there comes a point, help me here, mom, there comes a point when we need to take some responsibility for ourselves, and we need to not expect her to do everything for us. So if you're healthy, clean it yourself. Wash it, fix it, pick it up, take responsibility. Because the Bible doesn't call mom to an exhausted life. The Bible calls her to a full life. But that also means that, that maybe we can give mom a small break here and there. Maybe it's just a little time to get away. And I, I think that's what a church family is also about. It, it's about helping each other out. It's about looking around and noticing moms who have a need and being a support and being a help to moms and have a need. It's seeing, it's seeing, it's, it's seeing it and doing something about it. It's seeing a single mom pulling to the parking lot when it's raining. 
or even when it's not raining, and she opens the van door, and out comes a lot of little people. And you realize, wow, there's just one mom with a lot of little people around her. Wow, she might could use some help, and she's got a, a diaper bag over one shoulder and a purse over another and, and, and pulling a cart. And she's got all this stuff and kids around her. How many of you know she's doing her best just to get here with the kids? And she could use some support and some help. Or maybe, maybe you're in a small group and you see a mom that's just about to go under because of all the stress. You know, it, don't just say, here, let me pray for you. That is something important to say. Do that. Pray with her. But also realize you may be the answer to, to the prayer. That God wants to use you to help her, to, to help lift her. I want you to look at the screen. Here's a Chapel Hill mom whose husband, she says her husband travels a lot, and she says, you know, I just, need, I just need a support system. I just need some people that can help me because I got my hands full with all these kids. Take a look. My husband is a truck driver and works out of state. So he comes in um, for a couple of days and goes out for weeks. So it's extremely hard, but nothing, again, that I cannot handle because the man upstairs. He takes care of me. Not having a strong support system can be very, very, very challenging. I do have a sister that lives here, but she also has kids. So it's kind of hard um, <laughs> throwing my kids over to her. I do have friends that are able to take, you know, my kids here and there, but to have an actual support system, a go-to, no matter what, I have not yet established that. But in due time, it takes time. Thank you, Ruth. That's Ruth. She sings with us up here. And so, so, so look around. There, there are moms that need support. They need some help. And just, just tell her that, hey, you know what? Tell, give me a, a, a night where we can take care of the kids or you can just go out and do something. We'll take care of the kids, the dog, the cat. We'll take care of everything for you. She's probably going to say, no, I can't let you do that. But remember this. She doesn't mean that. So tell her you are absolutely going to let us do that and look around and support a mom that has a need like that. What else do moms need? Number three, moms need wisdom. With all the negative influence in the culture, moms need godly wisdom. And nobody taught them a lot of the things that they need to now do as a mom. No, nobody taught them how much screen time their kids should have. Nobody taught them if Fortnite is really healthy or not. Nobody, nobody taught them how much freedom to give the kids at various ages. Nobody taught them that every kid was gonna be so different. Am I right? Nobody te really teaches how to live life with margin and live life with balance. So moms need you to pray for her and need you to pray for wisdom. She needs wisdom to know when to hold on and when to let go. She needs wisdom to know when to say yes and when to say no. And when it comes to discipline, to know how and when and how much or but God says he will give wisdom. Come on, James chapter one, verse five, read it out loud with me. Come on, say it out loud. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Listen, we have a personal testimony in our own family that when you pray for wisdom, God gives it to you and he will pour it out on you and in you. So mom, you can pray for wisdom, Pray for mom to have wisdom. In fact, dad, how many of you know, how many dads need some wisdom to lead, to lead families and to serve? I see a mom pushing a dad's hand up right now. I just saw that. I just saw that. I see lots of stuff from up here. It is a fun place to be on Sunday, to watch what you do during the sermon. Some people, I, I ask for certain things. I've seen people dive under the seats before. <laughs> We always think about moms praying for us, don't we? How many of you have had a praying mom or a praying grandmother? Man, isn't that wonderful? But I think we ought to make praying for mom more popular, that we pray for mom. She needs our prayer. We need God's wisdom. There's a lot of things we just can't figure it out on our own with human intellect. We need God's wisdom. Number four, what do moms need? Moms need validation. Somebody say that, moms need validation. Proverbs 31 is the most famous chapter in the Bible about being a mom and being a wife. And here's how the chapter ends. I want to show you God's word. Verse 28, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. 
Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Look at this, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Now this is a chapter that's all about validating the importance of what moms and women do. Now I want you to notice two words here. Circle the last two words if you have your Bible. Circle the two words, city gate, city gate. Why is city gate so important? It's because that was the place of importance when this verse was written. The city gate was the place of importance. In ancient times, the city gate was not just the gate that led into the city, it was where everything that was very important was transacted. It's where everything happened. All the legal cases were tried at the city gate. All the government decisions were made at the city gate. All the business deals were made at the city gate. The city gate was the place of importance. And when, when this says, let her works praise her at the city gate, it's saying, let them at the city gate say how important she is and, what, and, and to have her validated as a mom and as a, a woman. At the city gate, at the place of most importance, at the seat of power, recognize the value of what moms do and what all parents do. As a mom, you're, what you do is so important. You're, you're, you're building a person. You're raising and training and modeling, releasing a person. You're building a person. Your kids are being shaped and built by you. And the Bible tells us that what you're building is the only thing that's going to last forever. Even governments, as powerful as they are, they won't last forever. But people will last forever. And that is the importance of what you do. Grandmom. Sometimes you, the responsibility falls to you or, or you support and you assist with the building of these little, little people, these children. With grandkids, you're helping mom, you're helping dad build godly values into the kids. Cindy and I take every opportunity as Papa and Nana to help our kids and to speak words of life and truth into these, these grandchildren. Cindy spends a lot of time with them. She, she is an incredible Nana and I honor you today on Mother's Day and I love you and I thank God for you the way you invest in our kids and now our grandkids. It's so important, but it's also important to pray for them. I want, I want you to see and hear from Kayla, our, our Bremen campus coordinator. I want you to hear what she says about how she prays for her kids. Take a look. My biggest prayer for um, my kids is every night before I go to bed, they're already asleep, I kiss them, and I always pray the same thing. I said, Lord Jesus, let them know you to be their God, yes. um, to be their own God. You know, me and my husband are really involved in church, and I always pray that my kids will just know Jesus to be their God, not their parents' God, but their personal God. I want that above all else, above going to college, above um, having a family and being successful. I want them to know Jesus, because I believe there's nothing that this world can throw at them that they won't get Come through on, as long as they know yep. Jesus. Man, I love hearing that. Mom, what you do and how you pray for your kids is so important. Grandma, Nana, what you do and how you pray for them is so, so important. So validate mom, because what mom is doing is really, really big. It's huge. It's of such importance. Number five. Moms need communication. They need to talk. Some more than others, it seems, but they need to talk. One mom said, I need communication. I especially need to hear from my teenagers. Mm hmm. Okay, teenagers, here's how you can help mom. You can help mom. This is what mom needs. Talk to her. Another mom said, Well, I need my kids to listen. Okay, kids, listen to mom. Sometimes talk, sometimes listen. Teenagers and dads, we need to remind, be reminded, dads too, we need to be reminded that a complete conversation is not comprised in the word fine or good. That is not a complete conversation, right? And all the moms said, I mean, how was everything at work today? Fine. How was everything at school today? Good. How did it go today? Good, fine. No, a little bit more is needed. Mom needs conversation. She needs you to talk to her. And your mom needs you to talk to her with respect. I'm trying to help, Mom. I'm trying to help you. Mom needs you to talk with R-E-S-P-E-C-T. She needs some respect. She needs you to talk to her and needs you to honor her. You want to live long? 
Honor her. Talk to her with respect. I don't know why it is, but here, here's a reality. Sometimes it's the people that we're closest to who get the brunt of our ugly words, of our unhealthy words and unhealthy talk. And we find ourselves saying things we wish we'd never said, and we say it to the people that we love and should be honoring the most. God help us. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that which is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Talk to mom in a way that benefits those who listen. Talk to mom with respect. She needs that. She deserves that. And that shows that we are honoring mom. And you live longer too. All right. At every place, mom needs God-honoring communication. Number six, moms need rest. <laughs> uh, just saw mom get up and run around the back of the room. Moms are often dealing with these twin emotions of exhaustion and guilt. What do I mean? Well, exhaustion because they're doing so much and guilt because they feel like they're not doing enough. Am I right? They need physical rest, they need soul rest. The kind of rest that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Tamara referred to it a moment ago. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, heavy laden, the Bible says, and I will give you rest. There's a soul rest that, that we all need. We all need this, not just moms. There's a soul rest. There's a physical rest that we all need in order to lead well, to parent well. So, so we need to help mom. We can help mom have rest. I mean, plan a sleep-in day for mom once in a while. Just, I'm, just, just, is there a way to get mom out of the house maybe for an overnight break? I'm just brainstorming with you right now. I'm just trying to, is there, is there something that we can do to get mom some rest? Because she needs to be rest to be strong and to be able to serve in the way she's called to. There's another very important thing, and then we're going to close. Number seven, moms need faith. Moms need faith. We all need faith. We all need this. This, is, this isn't just for moms, of course. We all need faith. Jesus said in John 14:1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Jesus says, trust me. You putting your faith and trust in God is what you need. It's trusting, it's leaning on Jesus. Mom, when you're faced with all these things and all these questions and all these concerns and in insecurities, it's finding your security and your hope and your help in Jesus Christ. It's learning to lean on him. We used to sing an old song. I'm learning to lean, I'm learning to lean, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. When it feels like there's no one else to turn to, you've learned how to lean on Jesus. You've learned how to trust in Jesus. When you give your, the keys to the, to the car for the, to your 16 year old for the first time that they're gonna take out, I know, I've got moms shaking, it. oh my God. And they're gonna take off down the street and nobody's with them and nobody's there to tell them what to do and what not to do. No one's to, there to tell them to come home at a certain time. I mean, there, there comes a point where you gotta learn to lean. You gotta release. You can't live with all that worry and all that anxiety. You've gotta, you gotta trust the Lord. Because just today, we had moms and dads say, God, we're giving them into your hands. What are we doing? We're trusting. We're leaning on you, God. Our hope is in you. We're leaning on you. The Bible says in Psalm 62, 8, Trust in Him sometimes. Oh, you're, you're not listening. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Trust in Him at all times. What does it mean to pour out your heart to Him? God, we need you. God, I trust you. God, I pour out my heart to you. I'm desperate for you. I need you to care for my kids. I need you to protect them. Lord, we trust you. We believe that you're giving angels charge over them today. I trust you. You are my help, for God is our refuge and strength. Moms, you need faith. You need to trust him for the big things. But mom, you also need to have faith for the everyday things. You need faith when you're tempted to worry. I've had two of the sweetest grandmothers. They're both in heaven now with Jesus. But one of my grandmothers, she was, she was just famous in our family for saying, oh honey, I'm so worried about you. 
If we tell them what we've been doing, oh, honey, I've just been worried about you. Well, my, Grandma, I just got back from, I know you were there, and I was worried about you the whole time. What she was really saying is, I love you so much. And we knew this. I love you so much, I'm thinking about you all the time. And it's one thing to be thinking about them, but it's another thing to be worrying about them. And she didn't really mean that, that she, I mean, maybe she did, but she was worried, but we don't have to worry. We need to trust God. So rather than worrying about your kids, or your grandkids, how about praying for them? Put them in the hands of a God who is our refuge and our strength and help. Take those moments that you would spend worrying and putting forth energy, but pray and say, God, we need you. I want everyone to say this aloud with me in Philippians chapter four. Moms and dads, students, everybody say it out loud. We can learn from this. And this needs to be part of our quiet time scripture that we speak out loud. It says, don't worry about anything. Say it again. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I think most moms would say, most moms would say, I find myself in times where I just need to take this word and I need to live this. I'm not going to worry, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to tell God what I need and I'm going to thank him for what he has done. Then you can experience God's peace. As I close, there's probably one thing, Mom, you need more than anything else. Because I know I've heard you say it. You need to know that your kids are saved. You need to know your kids have a relationship with Jesus. And some of you in the room today, you can praise God and say, I'm confident I know today that all my kids have a relationship with Jesus. But there's some of you that can't say that. And you're still praying for them. And you're standing on the promises of God that your whole house, all of your children will be saved, young and old. And I wanna encourage you to continue to pray for their salvation. But maybe you're here today and you came with mom, or maybe you're here today for whatever reason and you're not saved. In other words, you don't know for certain that if you were to die today that you would spend an eternity with God. In other words, you know that you've not been following Jesus. You know that you've not been living for Christ. You've been living for yourself. You know you've been living in sin. That's disobedience to God and his word. You know there's guilt, maybe even shame that you're carrying. But I want to tell you today, there is, there is a loving, loving God, a savior, Jesus, who died for your sins, who rose again on the third day, that says, I, I want you to have full life. You don't have to carry around the guilt and the sin of your past, but you can live in a new life with a hope and a future and live free from that guilt. If you're here today and, and maybe you're, maybe you're a, a son or a daughter, maybe you're a mom, maybe you're just someone today that just, I'm desperate. I need Jesus. I want you to bow your head with me right now. And we're going to pray on this Mother's Day for salvation. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit would work in our hearts, move in our hearts right now, convicting us of sin and calling each of us to soul salvation, calling us to a place of new life, of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And if you're here today and you'd be real honest with me, be honest with God first, but if you would be real honest and say, Pastor Dave, I know I'm not in a right place with God, but I want to be, and I want to be saved. On this Mother's Day, how many of you in this room today would say, I'm ready to give my life to Christ. I'm ready to follow Jesus. I want God to do something in my life. You're a son, daughter, mom, dad. Whoever you are, would you slip up your hand on the count of three? Shoot it up. One, two, three. All over this room, lift up your hand right now. Lift up your hand. Yes. Yes, I see your hand, sir. Thank you. Who else? Yes. Yes. God bless you. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Anybody watching online? This is your moment to say yes to Jesus. I need Jesus to do something brand new in my life today. I want to be saved. 
I want to be saved. Is there a mom in the room? You know, you've been, you've been fighting and struggling maybe for quite some time, but today you're ready to just surrender all to Jesus. Yes, I see a hand going up. Yes. Is there a dad? Is there a dad saying, I'm, I, I'm here today because of my wife, because of mom, but I need to give my life to Jesus. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, would everyone just pray with me? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I can't pray for you if you lifted your hand or you're ready to say yes to Jesus. I can't pray for you, but I can certainly guide you and pray with you. Would you just, would you just follow me in prayer and let me pray? Everybody, if you would just pray this out loud, let's just encourage everyone by praying this out loud together. Dear Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Just say that out loud. I give you my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I repent and I turn from my past and I choose to follow you, Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me. So I ask you to wash me and cleanse me. Make me brand new on the inside. Would you take away my guilt? Would you remove the pain of my past and give me hope and a future? Jesus, I believe you rose again on the third day. And I believe that you are the living Son of God. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. And I believe today, right now, I am saved. I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will follow you. Amen and amen. Let's praise him all over this room and thank him for what he's done and what he's doing right now in hearts. Praise God together. Praise God. There is a card there in the seat pocket in front of you. We call it the Next Step card. And I'd like for you to take it out. In fact, everybody that lifted their hand or prayed that prayer with us, maybe for the first time, maybe just you renewed your commitment to Christ, would you just do me a favor and take out that card and just put a little check mark right there where it says, I made a decision to follow Christ. After you put a little information at the top, just give us your name and some basic information. But I made a decision to follow Christ. Some of you are ready to take your next step. You're ready to say, hey, I need to be water baptized or I need to get connected to a small group. Just, just check mark that and say, I want to take my next step. And finally, some of you just need to have us pray with you about something. We have a prayer service on Wednesday night. Wednesday nights are amazing as we come together and we worship and we pray. We have communion, but we pray over the needs of our church. And if you'll write a prayer request right here, it will get be prayed for by our church family on Wednesday nights at our prayer service and by our staff throughout the week. So you can fill out that praise re pray prayer request and also the, a praise report. If you've seen God answer your prayer, we'd love for you to do that. When you get finished with that, you can just leave it on your seat and we'll pick it up after you leave. We're so glad that you've come today. Come on, let's praise God for moms again. Thank you for being here, Matt and Abby. Well, wow. Hopefully you had a refreshing day today at church and uh, we really hope you were blessed being with us. Like Pastor said, if you filled out that next step card, you can just leave it on your seat as you leave today. We have a very important, really awesome new series starting next week. Watch this. There's an invitation to encounter God in a way you may not have thought possible. How? By understanding and welcoming the Holy Spirit. He is not spooky. He is not weird. He is wonderful. We invite you to experience God by learning and embracing the Holy Spirit because right next weekend a super important message go ahead and invite all your friends to join you join us here as pastor brings this incredible message all right moms have you had a great day so far well don't forget as you leave there's going to be some tote bags we'd love to bless you with 
um, stop by guest services or you can go to the hospitality room to register for your free car wash. Um, also, there's a photo booth and uh, sparkling waters for you on the tables in the commons as well. So enjoy your day with your family. We love you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, and why don't you stand with us? And as you stand, our prayer partners are coming forward. Maybe you wrote down a prayer request, but maybe before you walk out those doors today, you might want one of our team members to pray with you. You might need healing in your body, or just them to stand in agreement with you on something. So we encourage you, before you run out, maybe come forward. And, uh, and as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Have a great week, Chapel Hill. We'll see you next week.